the strike of a light boat. I just air it out and leave with the mic broke. The micro, I'm hard body like Tycho. I heavy metal Chevys with nitro. Addicted to the papers of paper, hypnotic to the thirst. I'm pulling off criminal capers. I know the cocaine cracker is stinks, but that's what it is. Surrounded by the khakis and mints. We move. Do you have any other uh, industry tips and tricks you can do? I, I have a feeling people will like those. Indus oh, so we're talking about industry stuff, eh? And, and that's a pretty good theme for this episode, I guess. Uh, God, let me let me think back on that a lot of stuff. Uh, we could talk about uh, like how the industry's changing and everyone's shitting their pants. Yeah, I mean, there's. Uh, we, we, we're kind of touching on it a little bit, but it's. Um, the number, like, the, how much it costs to make a game is going up. And the right. the number of people who can sell games that don't cost a lot of money has gone down. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of, well, there's also, there's, basically, when I, when we started, and this might just be, you know, me talking on my ass, that's how it felt for sure. Did you have to walk to school in the snow uphill both <laughs> ways? There was a wide spectrum of, in terms of, you know, quality of games, where you had, you know, you had your AAA games. Right. You know, the games that get 80s and 90s, the AAA games. You had your budget games. Right. Like the uh, ones you see in the bin at Walmart. You know, some games that cost ten dollars. You know, you had that. Kind of games. Right. And then you had a bunch of the ones in the middle. You know, kind of, a lot of games that got 70s to 80s that weren't perfect. But, you know, that did well. That didn't cost too much money. You know. Pretty good, and there were there, there was a wide spectrum of games out there, and it seems like at this point there's games on your phone, and then there's Call of Duty, right? You have the games that are made with two people that sells for a dollar on a phone, right? And then you have these games that are gigantic teams, tons of money, tons of marketing, tons of support from the publisher, and. The in between is gone, it and uh, and since one of the two things are the games on your phone, we're also seeing a lot uh, less success in handheld games. Like a lot of people have moved from things like the DS or the Vita to just playing games on their Android or their iPhone. Yeah. Uh, so I, Apple's been eating everybody's lunch. Uh, Mid-range games aren't selling as well as they used to. Nobody even knows if the next generation of consoles will be something anybody will care about. So it's kind of scary. Right. Well, it's, I mean, it's just, even if you look through, uh, you know, recruitment letters are part of, are part of life at this point. Right. You, you be in the, you're in the games industry for a little while, people are going to send you recruitment letters no matter what you do. Right. They see your and name those, in the credits, they look you up, and then they try to call you. And those recruitment letters used to come from places like, you know, Epic or... Microsoft or Ubisoft or whatever, but now it's like it's Zenga or whatever other Playdom or, or Play Rovio yeah exactly or, yeah like any of the, the big mobile players or those Facebook are the only players. people that are out there you know growing you know yeah or at least growing to the extent where they're actually out there recruiting that's the only place you see startups anymore I mean you don't really see people making AAA startups. No, it's or definitely not. It's definitely not uh, the most lucrative way to go at this point. You're looking at a lot of risk if you want to go. If you're trying to jump into the AAA game. Well, and it, it's uh, it'll be very difficult as a startup to get a publisher to take the risk on you. You know, like right. you gotta you gotta be like the guys at Respawn. You gotta have a, a, a history, a pedigree. Yeah, yeah, and you know, there's got to be some equity in your name or in the the people who've worked with you because. There's nothing in your studio, you know? But yeah, I mean, that's the way I see it right now when I look at sort of where games are going. Is that I feel like that middle ground is sort of washing away. And uh, I think there, there are a lot of good games that live with that. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the, like, like your, open, your open world games used to mostly fall into that middle ground. Yeah. Uh, so we're seeing a lot less of those. Um, I mean, the you know the that that what was the company in uh, Rhode Island that was trying to make an MMO? Oh, Kurt Schilling's company. Yeah, they made a yeah. 
they made a successful game. It wasn't their MMO, but I mean, the rest of it just took them out of business. Because well, you know, the thing was that that, that game is really interesting because it was well reviewed. It was successful, uh, yeah. So I mean, sold reasonably well. It didn't sell insane. Yeah. But that wasn't enough. I mean, clearly the fact that they were bank banking on a big MMO didn't help. But that, but the fact that they made a game that reviewed well and sold reasonably well wasn't enough for them to get a sequel to that game. And that was one of the big things that's been down, is apparently they were in discussions to try to make a sequel, and were having trouble signing the contract. And, uh, and usually when people hear that, they say, well, why don't they make it less expensive? And, like, it's not that they're, uh, for the most part, it's not that they're spending too much money. I mean, g generally speaking, people know how much games should cost. It's pretty yeah. well established at this point. And just... To get enough people to make enough good-looking assets for a PlayStation 3 game or an Xbox 360 game, and to make that long enough that someone's going to want to buy it in a box for 60 bucks, it's hard. It is difficult. It's a it's a it's a hard road to hoe. And uh, uh, you know, like we're starting to see more experiments with people putting things at different price points and on different platforms and. Uh, a lot of people are really excited about the free-to-play, but microtransactions thing, and, and that seems to be pissing off the consumer, you know. So it's it's hard to it's hard to tell what's going to go on. Well, it's 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 an interesting thing right now because I mean, Riot is doing super well, and they're on the verge of emerging as a sort of a big player. Right. But and, uh, for those for those who don't know, Riot's the group who does uh, League of Legends. League of Legends, and I mean, they're making a ton of they're. You know they're doing well on League of Legends, and they're emerging as as a big time sort of publisher right now. But um, the question is, of course, uh, where is the breaking point on, on that? Like, there's not a lot of free to play games out like League of Legends right now, and there's a lot more coming in the in the next year or so. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Because you have like Dota three, and you have. Uh, you have League of Legends, you have Dota 3, you have... I forget the other ones. There's like two other ones. And uh, so, how long will this sustain and how long will it hold up is sort of the big question. I mean, you talk to... Uh, back when EverQuest was doing well, it seemed like the back on MMOs wasn't going to break anytime soon. Right. And all it really took was World of Warcraft to just be like, okay, that's the last one. Like, the rest <laughs> of these aren't going to do well anymore. Never this again. One. This one is the winner, and the rest of these are just ways to lose money. Does that ever make you feel good, Tony, that you ruined the MMO market with your work? <laughs> I only helped ruin the MMO market. What? You didn't make that game yourself? No, not what? entirely. You're so lazy. Why are you so lazy? <laughs> uh, what else do we want to talk about? I don't know. We can talk more about industry insider stuff, but I don't know what, what you got to talk about. We can end here and then... Do another one about more industry stuff, uh, or we could wait until we get some questions in the comments and do another one. Yeah, that, that might be fine. Okay, so uh, anyway, since we have to split it up for this issue of developer commentary, I'm Mike Stout, and I am Tony Garcia, and we'll catch you for the next one. We were so close to the end of the arena. This would be a horrible time to cut it out. You're on really round 15. Well, unless I lose. Well, look, maybe you'll win. What are the odds of that? Let's end on a high note. Well, you're not doing good now. I think I jinxed you. You always do that. Oh, God. You're Damn doing it. so good. You're on the road for a perfect. <laughs> hey, you uh, won. See? You I won. Totally won. Yay. All right. So for reals, then. Wait. Do you now have enough for the rocket launcher? Uh, mm, I, Let's see. No. Not even close. 150 oh, grand, geez. and we've got 80 grand. Yeah, we're done. All right. All right, so we're done. Uh, Give us a funky, fresh sign-off, Mike. Oh. Yeah, uh, you're on the spot now. This is what you've done to yourself. Just just by saying what's up? Just by saying what's up. I'm going to rue this for the rest of my life. Yeah, then. pretty much. All right. So uh, for developer commentary, I hate my partner, Tony Garcia, and I'm Mike Stout. And uh, fuck you, Tony. We're out. <laughs> Peace out. Peace out. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> really funny. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Mary laughed at that one. I didn't one. mean to laugh uh, so hard.